Hi everybody, it's Tim with Tim Boyer Photography. This tutorial is seven things bird photographers can learn from Ansel Adams. Ansel Adams said you don't take a photograph, you make it. And what he's saying here is that photography should be intentional and we should think about the images before we create them. This image of sandhill cranes at Bosque del Apache was 1 20th of a second f4. It was taken with a Canon 1D Mark II a long time ago, about 2006. The sandhill cranes were moving across these cornfields, and the cornfields are blurred in the background because I'm panning with the images, and a slow shutter speed blurs their wings. Now, I had watched the cranes fly across these cornfields two nights in a row. The third night, I set up my camera exactly in the right spot, and I got this shot because I had planned it out and I had pre-visualized it. I thought about what I wanted to do and I intentionally created an artistic painterly image of sandhill cranes. And that's the kind of planning that Ansel Adams is talking about when we don't take a photograph, we make one. The next thing that's really important that he said is that 12 significant photographs in any one year is a good crop. Well, we take thousands a day now. I think if we take fewer photographs and think about them, then we can get better photographs. This image of a red-throated loon was taken outside of Nome, Alaska. And I'm shot at f11 because I had a 600 millimeter lens and I used a 2x on it and I wanted it to be sharp. And I had to use a high ISO on this and I had a relatively slow shutter speed, but the birds were just kind of moving around on the pond very slowly. We had to wait until they came to our end of the pond. And so I was able to get a few images of this bird. I didn't take hundreds or thousands of pictures of this bird. I had to be ready and thoughtful about what I was going to do. So just fewer shots, more thinking, more pre-planning, more visualization, more intention, and I think our photographs will improve. So Ansel Adams knew what his camera could do, and he knew what aperture shutter speed he was going to use before he started taking the picture, and he knew if he was going to use any filters or not. When I was taking this picture of a mountain plover on the Oregon coast, it was uh, February, it was a dark day, it was gray overcast, there was very little good light. So I used Fill Flash, a Better Beamer Flash Extender, and I put a color temperature orange gel over the flash head to give the image some warmth and to brighten up the bird some. And this technique works really well, but it's that knowing how to get the kind of image that you want to create despite the weather conditions or knowing your camera, knowing how to use flash, planning ahead, thinking ahead, being intentional, putting all of these elements together so that you can create a really good image. So dodging and burning are the steps to take care of mistakes God made in establishing tonal relationships. And I think this to me is that Ansel Adams would love Photoshop and Lightroom and all of the choices that we have today for processing images. And being able to take an image like this in really low light, high ISO, um, the sun has gone down, we're losing the pink and lavender colors that are in the eastern sky when the sun goes down, and you can create these kind of ethereal images because you can pull out the details in post-processing. Post-processing is 50% of the image. Capture is important. Capture takes precedent. If you get a good image, you get a good negative, you can work with it. But then half of the work comes from the darkroom, and Ansel Adams was very good about being able to work his magic in the darkroom and really pull all of the picture out of that negative. Another thing that Ansel Adams says is, ask yourself, does the subject move me to feel, to think, to dream? So we want to create emotion in our images. So this little spotted sandpiper is cute, and that's a really easy emotion to uh, invoke in people, but it's the kind of thing that he wanted to do. Make the image so that people respond to it, people connect to it, have a sparkle in the bird's eye helps, having some cute factor or showing some symbolisms, right? Bald eagles are strong and owls are wise and all that kind of stuff. You know, I mean, it's, it's kind of cliche, but it works because it grabs people's emotions on a level that they don't really think about the obvious things that we're trying to do. 
Ansel Adams also said a good photograph is knowing where to stand. So he planned his shots. He knew where he was going to set the tripod up. He didn't start taking his photographs until he knew exactly where he was going to be because he was only going to take a couple of shots. He had a limited number of those 8x10 glass negative plates. So he had to be at the right spot and point of view is really important. Here with this wood duck, I'm actually laying down on the ground using a skimmer ground pod. I have knee pads on. I'm shooting eye level with the duck. Getting your point of view is important in bird photography, just as important as it is in landscape photography. And searching for the right point of view and then getting the shot is a great way to do this rather than just start taking pictures right away. Work the subject, look around a little bit, plan your shot, think about it, and in this particular case, getting as low as I possibly could really helped. And then Ansel Adams also is famous for saying there are no rules for good photographs. There are only good photographs. And so put the bird right in the middle. Put the horizon in the middle of the frame. Break the rules of composition. Break the rules of side lighting, front lighting. You know, Do whatever you need to do to have an evocative image that will mean something to people, that will move them, make them think, make them curious. Those are all the kinds of things that make a lasting image, an image that 10 years from now you'll look at and you go, wow, I took a pretty cool image you know, in 2019. All of these seven things are kind of important. And let's summarize them, okay? So just so that we keep them fresh in our minds as we go out and photograph later today. So be intentional. Think about what you're going to photograph and how you're going to photograph it. Think more and take fewer, better images. Don't spray and pray and try to get a good image. That really never works. I mean, sometimes you get lucky, but most of the time it doesn't work. Know your camera. Know what you can get out of your camera. We all know that our eyes see 12 stops of light and a camera sees about eight. And so the camera is never going to be able to record what we want, but know how to get the most out of your camera. And then post-processing is 50% of the image because we want to pull out more dynamic range or we want to cut down the highlights, bring up the shadows, whatever. But post-processing is really important. And communicate what it feels like. Take pictures that are evocative and that mean something and that move your audience. Know where to stand because point of view is really important. And there are no rules. There's only good photographs. And so go out and take some really good photographs, okay? Hey, if you enjoy what I'm doing on my channel, give me a subscribe, like, or share. I would really appreciate that. And remember, if you want to learn more about bird photography, you can get a copy of my book. It's available on Amazon as a Kindle and a trade paperback. You can also get a signed copy of my book at timboyerphotography.com. And I do a monthly newsletter. If you'd like to sign up for that, go to the About page on my YouTube channel, and there's a sign-up link there. Hey, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next week. Bye.